Hello friends, thank you once again for tuning in. I'm your host, Mr. Spotter Fred, and we'd like to continue doing what we like doing most. Remember, we are doing financial reporting. We are looking at financial reporting. Last time, we introduced partnership, and it's uh, still the same topic that we'll, be conti we'll continue doing, the partnership. And we say that in partnership, there are two items. There is dissolution, there is dissolution of a partnership, there is dissolution of a partnership, and there is a conversion. There is conversion of a partnership. There is conversion of a partnership. We introduced dissolution of a partnership. Dissolution of a partnership firm. That is the area we introduced last time. So last time we talked about dissolution of a partnership. But it was just a basic introduction. We we'll want to advance on the same area. Remember we looked at uh, dissolution. We even look at the basic concepts of dissolution. We looked at some of the ledgers that will be required, the accounting entries that will be required to open in case of dissolution. We also looked at an example. Our example one was in respect to dissolution, just basic dissolution of a partnership. Now today we want to advance this further. We talk about piecemeal dissolution. Piecemeal, piecemeal dissolution, piecemeal dissolution. Now friends, remember, we have been assuming, in fact in the first example, we assumed that a dissolution was agreed upon and it took place within one period, within one day. That's the assumption that we had. But in reality, it's not possible. It's not possible to carry out a dissolution process within a single day. It's not possible to sell all the assets within a single day, pay the liabilities within the same, same period, and even pay the partners' capital balances within the same period. It's not possible. Assets are likely to be gradually realized, and the liabilities will gradually be paid off. Then the partners' capital balances will also be gradually paid off. So we cannot do dissolution within a single day. We do dissolution in piecemeal. We realize the assets gradually, the liabilities are paid gradually, and the partners' capital balances are paid gradually. So that's what we refer to piecemeal dissolution. So we are saying in piecemeal dissolution, in piecemeal dissolution, assets, assets are gradually, gradually, gradually realized they are gradually realized liabilities 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 and capital balances and capital balances or oh, i could easily say this i could say that payments made after the la, the assets are realized payments 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 made made in the following order in the following in the following order in the following order so first we must pay one dissolution expenses dissolution expenses dissolution expenses must be paid two we have uh, the creditors we have the creditors and outside liabilities and outside liabilities uh, and outside liabilities must be paid then three we Pay the partner's loans, the partner's loans, the partner's loans. Then four, we now pay the capital balances. Capital balances are repaid. So that is what we have as dissolution, piecemeal dissolution. We sell the, uh, we realize the assets. Assets are gradually realized. The payments are then made. You know, it can take even, dissolution can take even two months, three months, five years, 10 years, you know, dissolution of a partnership, depending with the size of the firm. So that is what you do. Gradually you pay the dissolution, you pay the creditors, you pay the partners' loans, and the capital balances are the last one to be paid. Now, capital balances, uh, repayment, repayment, repayment of...
capital balances, repayment of capital balances may be made, may be done, may be done using either, using either, using either the following, using either the following methods, using either the following methods. Now, one of the methods we can use is the maximum, maximum potential, maximum potential, we also call it possible, possible loss, possible loss, loss method. So we can use the maximum possible or potential loss method, what we normally refer to MPL. Or two, we can use the capital surplus, the capital surplus, the capital surplus method, the capital surplus method. So you can either use the maximum potential or possible loss method or the capital surplus method in uh, making or determining the cash to be distributed to the partners as their capital balances. Now we start with the maximum potential loss. The maximum, maximum potential, potential, potential or possible or possible loss method or possible loss method. Now how does this one go? The maximum potential or possible loss method. Now this method assume or think that any asset not realized at every stage of realization is worthless, meaning it's likely not to be realized, the assets are likely not to be sold, and that means that at every stage of realization there will be a possible loss. There will be a possibility of not selling, of not realizing some assets. So there will be a possible loss. That means that a maximum possible loss will be determined at every stage of realization, which will be shared among the partners using their profit and loss sharing ratio. So that process will always continue like that. So in this method, method thinks that this, this, this method, this method, this method thinks, thinks, thinks that, thinks that, thinks that any asset, any asset, any asset not realized, not realized at every stage, at every stage of realization, at every stage of realization, at every stage of realization to be worthless, to be worthless, to be worthless. Thus, thus, a possible loss, a possible loss will be determined, will be, will be determined, a possible loss will be determined, that will be shared, that will be, that will be shared, that will be shared, that will be shared among the partners, among the partners, among the partners, among the partners, using, using, using their profit, their profit and loss, profit and loss ratio. That is important. So that is a summary of what a maximum potential or possible loss method is. Now then, you need to remember, from our books we have explained it in details. Don't forget that. We also have the steps, the steps of uh, in uh, maximum potential loss. What are the steps? Step number one, our step number one. Now, provide, provide, provide for dissolution expenses, dissolution expenses, and all liabilities, and all liabilities, and all liabilities sufficiently, sufficiently, sufficiently. So you must provide, you must look at how much cash do we have in the bank or in, in, uh, what is the cash at hand. And then are you able to pay all the dissolution expenses or all the liabilities sufficiently? Meaning you pay until you even have an excess cash. If you're not able to provide for that using the cash at bank, then you do realizations. You realize, you do realizations until when you are able to satisfy those dissolution expense and liability sufficiently. So if the cash at bank is not sufficient, then do realization, meaning sell the assets until that point in time you are able to pay or provide for those items 
sufficiently. Then number two, number two, any cash, the excess cash that uh, was from step number one will be used to repay the partner's capital balances. So you say that uh, the excess, excess cash balance from step one, from step one will be used, will be used to repay, to repay the partners, the partners' capital balances, the partners' capital balances. But not directly as we have just said it. There is a, a process there. You will find, let me even say A, A, find out, find out the difference, the difference between, between the cash, between the cash, the cash balance or the cash available and the capital balance and the capital balances and the total capital balance to information. Let me even put it much clear and say the, the and the total and the total and the total and the total capital capital balance due and the total capital balance due then you know the difference be the difference the difference the difference will be will be the maximum the maximum potential loss that difference between the cash available and the total capital balance will be known as a maximum potential loss. And now step number three, distribute, distribute, distribute the maximum, the maximum potential loss using, using their profit and loss ratio. So you distribute that maximum potential loss among this, uh, the partners using the profit and loss ratio. After you have done that, then, then, then deduct it. Deduct it from the individual, from the individual, from the individual capital balances, capital balances, capital balances due from the individual capital balances due. So you deduct it from that. Now, in step number four, if after you have deducted the maximum potential loss from the individual capital balances, the one that was shared, the difference will either be credit or debit. If they are credit, means that they are all uh, positive balances. So you say, and if they are debit balances, fine. If they are debit balances, if one of them is a debit balance, that is, then we must share that debit balance using the capital ratios before dissolution. So if if one of the of the balances of the balances is is a debit balance, is a debit balance, or rather we say is a deficit. Then, then apply, apply the rule, the rule of Ghana, the rule of Ghana versus Mray, the rule of Ghana versus Mray in absorbing, in absorbing, in absorbing, in absorbing, in absorbing the debit balance, the debit balance, the debit balance, the debit balance. But if from step number three, there were all credit balances, then that would be a fast cash distribution. But if one of the, debit, one of the partner has a debit balance, then you must absorb that debit balance first. Then step number five, step number five, uh, the, all the credit balances, all, all the credit balances, all the credit balances, all the credit balances should be should be should be should be 
equivalent to should be equivalent equivalent to equivalent to cash distribution cash distribution cash distribution to the partners to the partners this is a cash distribution to the partners then as and when so we can say six as as and when as and when as and when cash is realized cash is realized the above the above the above steps the above steps will be will be repeated will be repeated and especially we are talking about especially the step 2 step 2 to step 4 uh, to step 5 so especially because we cannot pay step 1 we cannot pay dissolution expenses twice we cannot pay liabilities twice no so the above steps unless otherwise will always be repeated as and when realizations are made <laughs>